Hello students, good evening. So it's time for our class. So could you please uh, say hi to madam? So just uh, in the live chat, you write uh, hi to madam. So the link uh, for attendance, I will give at the, uh, uh, I, will, I will give later. So uh, do need to you do need to fill into the form, okay? So I will check your attendance later on. So uh, get ready your hydrocarbon uh, lecture notes. So we shall start. Okay. So tonight I will start with uh, hydrocarbon. So I will start with LK. Okay, so I will start with LK. So uh, I will start with LK. So LK. So LK. So hydrocarbon LK. So basically LK is the hydrocarbon that contain carbon and hydrogen. Okay, so contain carbon and hydrogen only. So for hydrocarbon, so it can be aliphatic hydrocarbon. So what is aliphatic hydrocarbon? So aliphatic hydrocarbon basically is referring to carbon and hydrogen. They can join in the straight chain, branch, or in non-aromatic ring. Okay, so hydrocarbon, so basically can be divided into aliphatic hydrocarbon or aromatic hydrocarbon. So what is, what is aromatic hydrocarbon? So aromatic hydrocarbon basically so consists of, okay, wait. Uh, can you see my screen? Okay. Let me mark first. Okay, you can see my screen. Okay, uh, so let me continue. Okay, so let me continue. So uh, hydrocarbon, so basically we are going to look at alkane. So alkane is a hydrocarbon. So for alkane, okay, so it contains of carbon and hydrogen. But generally, for hydrocarbon, it can be aliphatic hydrocarbon or aromatic hydrocarbon. So what is aromatic hydrocarbon? So aromatic hydrocarbon basically uh, uh, refer to the hydrocarbon that uh, fulfill a few criteria, four criteria, okay? Planar, cyclic, conjugated, unsaturated molecule, and is stabilized by the pi electron delocalization. So basically, for aromatic hydrocarbon, it usually has something like this. So when I uh, talked about the functional group in the previous chapter, so still remember, this is a ring. So a ring is example of aromatic hydrocarbon because it is planar, planar, okay? And it is cyclic. Cyclic, okay, so ring, cyclic. And then mempunyai conjugated unsaturated molecule. So conjugated unsaturated molecule basically means that alternating single and double bond. Alternating single, think of alternating single, double, single, double, uh, single, double bond. Okay, so these are the criteria for aromatic hydrocarbon. So hydrocarbon can be aromatic hydrocarbon or aliphatic hydrocarbon, okay? It can be aromatic hydrocarbon or aromatic hydrocarbon. So for hydrocarbon, yang tidak mempunyai ciri-ciri begini, so tidak mempunyai ciri-ciri ini, then there will be aliphatic hydrocarbon. So there will be aliphatic hydrocarbon, okay? So for aliphatic hydrocarbon, so for aliphatic hydrocarbon, so basically, uh, the hydrocarbon, so the carbon and hydrogen, they will be joined in a straight chain. So they will be joined in a straight chain branch or in a non-aromatic ring. So it means that it can be a straight chain like this. 
or it can have like brunch. Or non-aromatic ring, like for example, beginning. This is non-aromatic, sebab tidak mempunyai uh, conjugated unsaturations. Okay, and it is not planal. So, uh, for aliphatic hydrocarbon, it can be saturated and also unsaturated. So, kalau saturated, basically mempunyai single bond sahaja. Like for example, the alkane and also cycloalkane. So alkane and cycloalkane only consist of a single bond. So they are saturated aliphatic hydrocarbon. So for aliphatic hydrocarbon, it can be unsaturated as well. Okay, so unsaturated aliphatic hydrocarbon consists of at least satu multiple bond, at least satu, satu multiple bond. Like for example, in the alkene, Cycloalkene, alkyne, they are unsaturated aliphatic hydrocarbon, bukan aromatic. Sebab so, like in your alkene, for example, only consists of uh, one, sing one single bond. It is not ring, it is not ring, and uh, not having the conjugated unsaturated molecule. Okay, so because of that, Okay, so number that alkene is not ring. That's why it is not aromatic hydrocarbon. Even cycloalkene, so for example like this, number that dia bukan ada alternating single double, single double, uh, single double. So because of that, cycloalkene is also the unsaturated aliphatic hydrocarbon. Okay, so the aromatic hydrocarbon, we are going to look at it in details in the next chapter. So for saturated hydrocarbon, so basically uh, alkane as the saturated hydrocarbon, it consists of single bond. It consists of all single bond. And then each of the carbon in the alkane is sp3 hybridized. It's sp3 hybridized. So means that carbon in the alkane mempunyai Four sigma bond. So, but semua the carbon, uh, the the bond around the carbon in alkane is single bond. Therefore, the geometry at each of the alkane, uh, each of the carbon in alkane is tetrahedral with bond angle about one o nine point five. So, for alkane, so alkane can be open chain, open chain, or uh, uh, in the ring form. Okay, so for open chain alkane, the general formula is CnH2n plus 2 with n in it must be more than 1. So how do we name alkane? So IUPAC nomenclature tells us how to name alkane. So we are going to look at this uh, in details tonight. So basically, how do we name alkane? So in Form 5, you have learned to name alkane, so basically, we tamba A and E at the back. Suffix means that uh, at the back, okay? At the back of the name, we just add in A and E, okay? So for cycloalkane, so the general formula is CnH2n, and the N must be more than uh, three or more than three, okay? So uh, for, for, uh, for basically, so by looking at this general formula of cycloalkane, so remember uh, in, the, in the previous chapter you have learned what class of compound also having this general formula? It is alkene. Therefore, cycloalkane is the functional group isomer to alkene. So that mempunyai general formula yang sama. So how do we name cycloalkane? So basically to name cycloalkane, we just need to add cyclo in front of the alkane. We just need to add the word cyclo in front of alkane to name the alkane. So now we move on to look at the IUPAC nomenclature of straight chain alkane. Okay, so straight chain alkane or unbranched alkane so uh, all the carbons are joined together in a single chain. 
tak ada branching, tak ada branching, no side chain. Okay, so how do we name our cake, the straight chain our cake? So basically, we just need to add A and E at the back of the name. Okay, and must remember for our K, the general formula is CN H2N plus 2. So this is the name for straight chain our K. So it consists of one carbon. Remember, one carbon is met. So add A and E at the back. So methane, one carbon straight chain our K, we call it as methane. So if we uh, if there is two carbon in a straight chain, so two carbon add. So you add A and E at the back, so we call this ethane. So if three carbon in a straight chain, three carbon in a straight chain like this, so this alkane, three carbon is prop. You add A and E at the back, so give us propane. Okay, so if having four carbon in a straight chain so four carbon is put so add a and e at the back so butane so five carbon in the straight chain so five carbon is pen tamba a and e at the back so pentane so if six carbon in a straight chain so six carbon is hex tamba a and e at the back so hexane so if seven carbon Seven carbon, seven hat. Tamba A and E at the back, so heptate. So lapan carbon in a straight chain is odd. Tamba A and E at the back, octate. So nine carbon in the straight chain called non. Okay, tamba A and E at the back, none. Ten carbon, so ten carbon. So remember ten attacked, so decay. So uh, that, that is 10. So you add A and E at the back. So uh, decay. Okay. So this is how we name the straight chain our cake. So now we continue to look at how do we name the branch our cake. How do we name the branch our cake? So our cake yang mempunyai side chain. So first, we need to determine the parent name so how do we determine the parent name need to find the longest continuous carbon chain need to find the longest continuous carbon chain so how to find the longest continuous carbon chain so means that when you put down your finger you look is okay so where is the longest continuous carbon chain so I think is this one. So this is the longest continuous carbon chain. So we have how many carbon? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So can you find any longer than seven? So if no, then this is the parent name because this is the longest continuous carbon chain. So this parent consists of seven carbon, consists of seven carbon. So if consists of seven carbon, so means that this parent is called heptane. Okay, heptane. Okay, because consists of seven carbon so it's heptate so then step number two if there are two chain of equal length okay so if there are two chain of equal length then we need to choose the parent with more number of substituent so what is substituent substituent refer to branching or we can call it side chain okay so like this one this is side chain okay so this is side chain let me use another color okay so this is side chain 
these are uh, side chain or we call them as substituent we call them as substituent so step number two we need to choose the parent with greater number of substituent so the one that we choose just now we choose this as the parent so this parent has how many substituent so can we see one two three four have four substituent so but so just now we say the longest carbon chain consists of seven carbon can you see that if i draw like this we also have seven carbon uh, continuous so one two three four five six seven so this is also having seven carbon in a continuous chain so is this the better parent so according to number two we need to choose the one with greater number of substituent so if number two how many substituent do we have we have one two three this one only three substituent but this one give us four substituent so according to step two we need to choose the one with more substituent so because we need to choose the parent with more substituent so this is step number two so step number three so we need to number the we need to number the chain from the end uh we need to okay number the chain begin with the end of the chain nearer to the substituent so just now we all agree that this is the parent chain so this is the parent chain so how should we number the parent chain so from this end or this end so number three telling us that we need to number it begin with the end that is nearer to the substituent so which end nearer to the substituent so if we start with this end then we will get one two so number two carbon number two already having the substituent already have the substituent but if we start number from this end it will be one two three the third carbon only will have the substituent according to number three we need to start number from the end that is nearer to the substituent so means that we need to start from this end because nearer to the substituent not from the not from this bottom end okay because we want to number from the end nearer to the substituent so therefore how should we number this parent chain we need to start number this one first carbon second third fourth fifth sixth seven okay so this is how we number the parent chain then number four if branching occurs at equal distance from uh from either end of the longest chain the carbon are numbered from the end which gives lowest uh gives the substituent lowest possible number so what does this mean so for this one i cannot use the uh, previous example so let me give you another example so for example so uh this is your alkane so this is your alkane okay so we know that this is the parent chain so this is the parent chain so can you see that uh okay let me draw this here okay so can you see that 
If you start number from this end, so this is one, two, so you will get the first substituent at carbon number two. If you number from this end, so at the back, so you also get the first substituent at carbon number two. Then how should you number it? Okay, so then you need to number it in the way that you give lowest possible number to the next substituent. So to the next substituent. So like for example, if you start number from here, so the next substituent will be carbon number six. But if you start number from the back, your second substituent will have number uh, number three. Therefore, you should number from the back because you give lowest possible number for all the substituents. You get two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you get two, three, seven. Okay, so the lowest possible number for the next substituent. Lowest possible number for the next substituent. Okay, so that is uh, what meant by point number four. So if from the both end, first substituent giving you the same number, then you need to make sure the second substituent, you need to number from the end where the second substituent has lower possible number. So number five, we need to identify the name of the substituent. We need to identify the name of the substituent. Okay, so just now, so this is the parent. And I already told you that you need to start number from the end, from this end, because this will give us lowest possible number for the first substituent. Okay, so instead number five, we need to name the substituent. We need to name the substituent. So just now we have uh, identified. So this is the substituent. So these are the substituent for this uh, alkane. So now instead number five, we need to identify and name the substituent. So this substituent only consists of one carbon. So this is called methyl. So this substituent hanya ada satu carbon. So, kalau satu carbon, kita panggil methyl. So, this substituent also consists of one carbon. So, this is called methyl. And this substituent consists of dual carbon. So, we call it as ethyl. Okay, so step number five, we need to identify and name the substituent. Okay, so name the substituent. So now, shall we move on to look at some common substituent group? So remember, satu carbon, kita panggil met. Kalau dia become the substituent, that particular uh, carbon itu become the substituent, satu carbon sahaja, we call it as methyl. If dual carbon, dual carbon as a substituent, macam ni, dual carbon, then we call it as ethyl. Kalau tiga carbon like this, we call it as propyl. Okay? So for propyl, so prop bermaksud tiga carbon, tiga carbon. So for tiga carbon, kalau susun, linear like this, we call it propyl. But not necessary all the time, the tiga carbon a side chain or substituent susun secara linear begini. So sometimes it can also arrange sama kaki. Total masih tiga carbon. Total masih tiga carbon but dia susun like this. Sama kaki. So you get CH3, CH3, CH. So sama kaki begini masih lagi Propyl, but because sama kaki, we call it as isopropyl. Iso refer to same. Iso means same. So this one sama kaki, total tiga carbon, total tiga carbon. 
So we call it isopropyl. We call this substituent isopropyl. Then now we move on to look at, so if we have four carbon as the substituent, four carbon straight chain bagini become the substituent, we call it as butyl. We call it as butyl. So not all the time we get four carbon arranged linearly like this as the substituent. So sometimes we can have isobutyl. So apply to isobutyl again, sama kaki. So still CC like this, sama kaki, but total four carbon, butyl, butyl. So a uh, total four carbon. So another one here. They only join to the join to the parents. So like for this one, you have two covalent bond. So two hydrogen. So this one, one hydrogen, CH3, CH3. So number that masih sama kaki, but total empat carbon. So we call this isobutyl. We call this isobutyl. And then we can also have set butyl. So this set basically means that the carbon that attach to the parent is is a secondary carbon means that are the dual kawan carbon are the dual kawan carbon the carbon that attach to the parent are the dual kawan carbon okay so that's why it is set butyl so how to draw set butyl so basically so c carbon in e attached to the parent are the dual kawan carbon dual kawan carbon but total butyl four carbon Total must have four carbon, so means that another one must be here. Another one must be here, or you can put here. Okay, so in order to give you set butyl, so set butyl will be like this. Total still four carbon, but then the carbon that attach the parent and the dual kawan carbon. So that is set butyl. Then now we move on to look at third butyl. So third here refer to tertiary. So refer to tertiary. So means that the carbon that attached to the parent consists of bigger carbon carbon. Consists of bigger carbon carbon. So this is the carbon that attached to the parent chain. So consists of bigger carbon carbon like this. And total still four carbon. That's why it's called butyl. Third butyl. Third means that the carbon attached to the parent has bigger kawan carbon. So you get your third butyl like this. Okay. So then we move on to look at if we are having five carbon as the substituent. Kalau five carbon as a substituent in a linear like this, linear chain like this, then we call it as pentyl. We call it as pentyl. Okay, so we can also have isopentyl as well. We can also have isopentyl as well. Again, isopermasut sama kaki like this. Sama kaki. Remember, sama kaki like this. But total five pentyl five carbon so means that need to join here like this and then this one attached to the parent chain okay so you get ch2 ch2 ch ch3 so again sama kaki that's why i saw pentyl pentyl is about total lima carbon okay and then we also can have uh, we can also have a uh, set pentyl. So set pentyl, not in the notes. Could you please add in set pentyl? So for set pentyl, also the same. Yang carbon ikat kepada uh, ikat kepada parent chain. It is a secondary carbon. It is a secondary carbon. So means that there are the dual kawan carbon. There are the dual kawan carbon. Okay, so but total, so total still lima. 
So total five. So if total five, so you can have one here. Okay, like this. Okay, so CH3, CH. And this carbon is the one that attached to the uh, parent chain. Okay, it is a secondary carbon, so by the dual carbon carbon. We can also, oh, sorry. We can also have terpentyl. Terpentyl means that tertiary pentyl. Tertiary pentyl. So means that the gawan, uh, the, the carbon that attached to the parent chain. So this is the carbon that attached to the parent chain. Consists of digger gawan carbon. Let me write up a bit. So terpentyl. Mempunyai tiga kawan carbon, like this. So this one total four. So another one you can add here. So this one CH three. So CH three. So CH two. CH three. So this is the carbon that uh, connect to the parent chain. It consists of satu dua tiga kawan carbon. That's why it is the third pentyl. So for pentyl, we also can have neopentyl. So neo pentyl, neo bermasu ala ala. Okay, so ala ala third pentyl is the So neo pentyl ala ala third pentyl, but it is not third pentyl. Kenapa? Because in a third pentyl, the carbon that attach the parent chain, it is the tertiary tertiary carbon because at the digger gawan carbon, digger gawan carbon. Okay, at the substituent. But for neopentyl, can you see that this is the carbon that attached to the parent? And ini hanya ada satu gawan carbon. Okay, hanya ada satu gawan carbon. So it is not, hanya ada satu gawan carbon in the substituent. So dia bukan, dia bukan terpentyl. Tapi bentuk dia macam terpentyl. Tapi bukan. Okay, it's the carbon. So... Basically, new pentyl, rupa dia almost like the third pentyl, but then dia bukan third pentyl, dia ala ala third pentyl. That's why it's called new pentyl. So this is the, uh, the 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 shape for new pentyl. Okay, so new pentyl total still one two three four five carbon. Okay, still have the five carbon. So uh, that is uh, five carbon uh, uh, become the substituent. Now we move on to look at uh, what are other common substituent. So sometimes ring can also become the substituent. So kalau ada tiga member ring, tiga member ring ini become the substituent. So tiga member ring we call it as cyclo. Okay, so cyclopropyl. Okay, cyclo means that it's the ring. Propyl sebab ada tiga carbon. Tiga carbon. Okay, so cyclopropyl. So kalau empat carbon in the ring, we call, and then it becomes the substituent, then we call it as cyclobutyl. Okay, and then if you are having, you are having, so remember this is your aromatic ring, so the aromatic ring become the substituent, then we call it as phenyl, okay? And then if you are having a uh, aromatic ring with a CH2 group, like this, so here is your parent chain, here is your parent chain. So if you are having uh, the aromatic ring and the CH2 group become the substituent, then that substituent we call it as benzyl. So we are going to look at these two, uh, more examples of these two in the next chapter. So what are other possible substituents? So sometimes halogen can become the substituent as well. Okay, halogen can become the substituent as well. So if we are having bromine as the substituent, it is being called as bromo, bromo. If Cl as a substituent, kita panggil chloro. If fluorine as the substituent, we call it as fluoro. If iodine as the substituent, kita panggil iodo. Okay? So sometimes the hydroxyl group can become the substituent. 
Kalau hydroxyl group become the substituent, we call it as hydroxy. Tak ada L lah. No L because this is substituent. Kalau functional group, hydroxyl with the L. But when it becomes the substituent, we call it as hydroxy. Hydroxy. Don't confuse with it. Okay? And then for the NH2 amino group, okay, so amino group possible to become substituent as well. So when it becomes the substituent, we call it as amino. And the nitrile, so nitrile group, remember, this is a cyano. Cyano group, when it becomes the substituent, we call it as cyano. So NO2, when it becomes the substituent, we call it as nitro. So this one, we are going to see uh, more next chapter. Okay, so just now, we already reached uh, step number five, right? Remember, so in step number five, we want to identify the substituent and name the substituent. Okay, so remember, identify the substituent and then we name the substituent. So now we move on to step number six. We want to give the IUPAC name for the RK. So when we want to give the IUPAC name for the RK, we need to follow a few rules. Okay, we need to follow a few rules. So the first rule is the position and the name of the substituent must be written in front of the parent. Okay, kita kena nama substituent dulu. So just now remember the parent is heptate, but our substituent will have methyl and ethyl. So the substituent, when we want to name the okay, substituent kena nama dulu. We need to name the substituent and also the positions of the substituent first. Okay, and then only nama uh, the parent name at the back. Okay, so the second rule is we must specify the location of the substituent on the parent chain. Okay, we need to include the location of the substituent. It is attached to carbon ke berapa in the parent chain. Kedua ke, ketiga ke, kelima ke. So we need to specify the location of the substituent in the parent chain. And then when we want to write number and word. We want to write number and words. We need to use hyphen to separate them. Like for example, if we have uh, two and also methyl. So this is number, this is words. This is, this is words. So we need to use hyphen to separate them. Between number, between number, we use comma to separate it. Okay, so between number, like here, two, two, we use number to separate it. Oh, sorry, we use comma to separate number. Okay, we use comma to separate number. And then rule number four is if we have two or more substituent present, Okay, so if we have two or more substituent present, then we need to list the substituent alphabetically. So means that, so tadi kita ada methyl dengan ethyl. Methyl dengan ethyl. So methyl start with M. Methyl start with M. Ethyl start with E. So alphabetical order means that kita kena take into account E dulu, then baru boleh susun M. Okay, so that is the fourth rules. Okay, when we want to uh, uh, arrange the substituent, kena ikut alphabetical order. Ethyl, E dulu, then baru boleh methyl. Okay, so if we have, if we have, a few same substituent. Like just now, kita ada tiga methyl. So kalau tiga methyl, we can call it as trimethyl. Trimethyl. Kalau ada dua methyl, we can call it as dimethyl. Kalau tiga, trimethyl. Kalau ada empat methyl, we can call it as tetramethyl. Okay? And then if it is set or third, uh, like for example, butyl, Okay, so we can call it as set butyl, third butyl. 
Okay, so basically, when we want to arrange substituent according to the alphabetical order, di, tri, tetra, set, third, we ignore. Like just now, it's trimethyl. Tapi, we don't, we don't consider trimethyl. We only consider it as methyl. Kenapa? Because Ayupak kata, di, tri, tetra, set, third, we ignore them in alphabetical order. So, for just now, trimethyl, we only look at methyl M. However, if we have the substituent, like for example, isopropyl, isopropyl, uh, neopentyl, cyclobutyl, for example, so they need to be included in the alphabetical order. Like for example, that the isopropyl, isopropyl kita tengok I, neopentyl kita tengok N, cyclobutyl kita tengok C, because these three things, we take them into account when we want to arrange in the alphabetical order. Hanya perlu ingat, iso, neo, and cyclo, we take them into account when arranged in the alphabetical order. Yang lain, ignore. So, and then rules number five is, if two substituents are present, so if we have two substituents on the same carbon, so two substituents on the same carbon, okay, like for example, okay, let me quickly give you an example. If not, Nandi, Madam Lupa, so old lady, can't remember. So this is the parent chain. So this is carbon number one, number two. So on carbon number two, we have two same substituent. So two substituent on carbon number two. So when we when we want to so when we want to uh, name uh, the substituent, okay. So when we want to specify the location, so two on the same carbon. So we need to put two two, and this is dimethyl. So we need to put like this. So that is what meant by rules number five. So if two substituents on the same carbon, so on the same carbon, we need to use the number twice. So two, two, twice. Okay, and then separate them with comma. So rules number six, if two or more identical substituents present, then we should use prefaces. So, like just now, I told you already, kalau ada dua methyl, kita panggil dimethyl. Kalau tiga, trimethyl. Empat, tetramethyl. Okay, we use the prefaces, di, tri, uh, tetra, penta. Okay, so now, okay, now we can move on to look at how to name uh, this alkane. Dari tadi, kita mau namakan dia. Belum, belum nama lagi. So, shall we name it? So, how to name it? First, we need to find the longest continuous carbon chain. That would be the parent. And then, we need to number the carbon chain. So, how to number? Make sure we number from the end where substituent pertama, lowest possible number. So just now I already told you, kena start dari sini. Tak boleh start dari sini. Sebab start dari sini, we get 1, 2. Kalau start dari sini, we get the first substituent number 3. So tak boleh. Okay, we want lowest possible number for the first substituent. So and then this is third, fourth, fifth, sixth, Seven, so seven carbon. So the parent is called heptane. And then remember, substituent. We also need to name the substituent and also specify their location. So what substituent do we have? So we have methyl. 3 methyl. We have 3 methyl. 
So this first methyl is at carbon number two. And this second uh, substituent methyl is on carbon number four. And the third methyl substituent at carbon number five. Remember, we need to specify their location. So it's at carbon number two, number four, number five on the parent chain. Lepas tu, we have three methyl. Kalau three methyl identical substituent, we use prefaces. Tiga, so trimethyl. Trimethyl. Okay, so what else uh, do we have? So we have this as our substituent as well. This substituent are the dual carbon in a uh, in a in a in a straight chain. So this dual carbon is on the third carbon on the parent chain. So we call that as three. So got carbon cadiga on the parent chain. So three ethyl. So three ethyl. And then the, the name, so how to name it? Okay, so name, remember alphabetical order, alphabetical order, ditri, tetra, uh, tidak kira. Okay, so because of that, we need to look at E and also M. Alphabetical order, E dulu, then baru M. So means that when we name it, it need to be three ethyl. Okay. Two, four, five, trimethyl. And then followed by parent. Okay, followed by parent heptate. Okay, so that is the name for this compound. 3 ethyl, 245. Hey, sorry, Madam Luper Coma Gasini. Okay, so 245 trimethyl heptate. So finally, this alkane uh, found the name. So now to test yourself, so I give you uh, one minute to do A. One minute to do A. So one minute to do A. Now, okay, remember step number one, find the longest continuous carbon chain. Find the longest continuous carbon chain. So where is the longest continuous carbon chain? It's this one. Any of you got it correct? You can write in the live chat. Right on, Madden, you got the longest continuous carbon chain, correct? Okay, so after we get the parent chain, we need to start number. We need to start number. So we need to number from A or B. A or B. So... Number from A or B. Uh, Nuri Najiha, reply on the live chat. Very tall, Madden. Gonna uh, number it from A, dari hujung A atau B. Eh, Nuri Najiha, tak respond lagi. Gonna number dari A atau B. Anybody want to tell Madam? I can see your live chat. You need to start from a number from A or B. Remember, first substituent, lowest possible number. Lowest possible number. So, can I start number dari A atau B? Okay, so you need to start number from A. Kenapa? So, if you start number from A, you get one, two. 
So the first substituent at number two, the second substituent at number two, and then three, four. Remember this C2H5 basically is uh, CH2, CH3. So basically it is CH2, CH3. So kalau start number dari B. Kalau start number, oh no. Okay, so kalau start number from B, kalau start number from B, you will get satu, dua, tiga. Can you see that? Ketiga baru first substituent. Remember, kita mau first substituent, nombor, as small as possible. As small as possible. Therefore, kena start nombor dari A dari, dari A dari. Okay, kena start dari hujung where it can give you lowest possible number for the first substituent. Okay, so we haven't finished number. So number four, this is number five, and this is number six. Okay, so the longest continuous carbon chain consists of enam carbon. So kalau consists of enam carbon, then the parent is called hexane. Is called hexane. Then how about the substituent? So what substituent do we have? So what substituent do we have? So let me circle the substituent. So kita ada ini at carbon number two. Kita ada ini at carbon number four. And kita ada ini at carbon number four as well. So remember when substituent number dia, kedudukan dia, we need to specify. So where are the methyl? It is first at carbon number two. And then at carbon number four, at the dua at carbon number four. So need to put dua kali. Dua kali number four means that at the dua methyl on carbon number four. And then how many methyl? Satu, dua, tiga. So try methyl. So what is the name of this alkane? So what is the name of this alkane? So it should be substituent kena nama dulu 244 trimethyl hexane. Okay. Then now we move on to look at B. We move on to look at B. So for B, again, circle the uh, who is the random guy? Very good. 244 trimethyl hexane. Very good. So now we look at B. We look at B. We look at B. Okay. So look at B. So shall we circle the longest continuous carbon chain? So longest continuous carbon chain. So circle the longest continuous carbon chain. So I give you uh, 30 seconds. Circle the longest continuous carbon chain. So can you see that the longest continuous carbon chain is this. Again, if you see C2H5, basically it means CH2, CH3. So CH2, CH3. So here is your longest continuous carbon chain. So longest continuous carbon chain so after you circle the longest continuous carbon chain so then so any any other so can we let me check one two three one two three four five six seven so one two three four five okay so that is the longest so after you get the longest continuous carbon chain then you need to number you need to number so how how should you number it? How should you number it? So you need to start with the M, B, or A. 
So you should start from A or B. So again, we need to start from A. So why? Because we want the first substituent lowest possible number. Kalau kita start dari B, the first substituent, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it will be at the number 5, carbon number 5. But if we start from A, we will get 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 will be, will be uh, at carbon ke 3. So we need to start from A. We need to start from A, okay, to give the lowest possible number for the first substituent. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 carbon parent. So this parent is called, so if 8, so you learn uh, in secondary school mathematics, 8 orthogon, orthogon. So here parent is obtained. Obtained. Okay. So then what substituent do we have? So the substituent, yeah, minus salah tekan lagi, sorry. Okay, so the substituent, so we have this and also this. So can you see that this one, one carbon, so we know this is methyl. Okay, so this methyl at the third carbon, so uh, three methyl. Okay, at the third carbon, so this is three methyl. And then how about this? Can you see that this group total one, two, three, three carbon. So three carbon is, but then if propyl straight chain, so propyl straight chain, this is not straight chain. Can you see that in it? Sama kaki, sama kaki. It's like this is the carbon that attached to the parent. So here you have one carbon, one carbon, so sama kaki. So means that this is isopropyl. Isopropyl. So isopropyl, and this is at the fourth carbon. So four isopropyl. So substituent, we have three methyl and also four isopropyl. Remember, it need to be alphabetical order. So iso, kita kena kira I. Remember, iso, cyclo, and neo, we take into account in the alphabetical order. Okay, and this is M. So I come before M. So therefore, the name of this compound is, so the name of this compound is, for isopropyl, three methyl octane. Okay, so very good. Hmm? Why well, I got uh, other uh, some are not uh, okay? It's okay. So now we move on to look at C. We look at C. So now shall we look at uh, C? So can you circle the longest continuous carbon chain? So circle the longest continuous carbon chain. So circle the longest continuous carbon chain. So I think it should be this one. So this is the longest continuous carbon chain. So remember, if you see C2H5, basically it is CH2, CH3. CH2, CH3. Okay, it is CH2, CH3. Okay, so, uh, so for this one, so where should we start number it? So A or B? So can you see that if we start number from the A, then the first substituent will be on carbon number four. If we start from B, then the first substituent will be at carbon number three. So means that we need to start from B, cannot be from A. We want lowest possible number for
for the first substituent. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so eight. So eight, so parent, eight, so obtain. Okay, so obtain. Then substituent, so substituent, so substituent, we have, this is uh, one carbon at carbon number three, so three methyl, and this is uh, methyl at carbon number four, so four methyl, and then uh, at carbon number five, we have three carbon in a straight chain, so this is a uh, propyl at carbon number five, so five propyl, so five propyl. And then we need to arrange them in alphabetical order, but be careful, remember, so substituent, we have two methyl. We have two methyl, we need to use a uh, prefix, remember prefix. So two methyl, so it is dimethyl. So this is three, four, dimethyl. And another substituent, five propyl. Okay, and then, must be in a di, tri, tetra, we don't take that into account in the alphabetical order. So because of that, for dimethyl, we still look at M. And then for propyl, we look at P. We look at P. So M come before P. So therefore, we name this substituent, uh, sorry, the, the alkane as uh, 3, 4, dimethyl, 5, propyl, octane. Okay, so that is C. So now, am I too fast? Okay, so now we move on to look at D. So we look at D. So D, find the longest continuous carbon chain. So can you see that? Can you see that? Um, is okay. Let me give you a clue. So it should be one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three. Get okay. one, two, three, four, five, six. So um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so uh, six carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six carbon, longest, conti uh, longest continuous carbon chain. Okay, so, but where is the longest continuous carbon chain? Remember, there are many possible ways to get the six carbon, but remember, we need to choose one with the most number of substituents gonna play the longest continuous carbon chain with most number of substituent must choose the one with most number of substituent so which one will give you most number of substituent so can you see that is this one okay so if you circle like this, you only get you only get three substituent. But the one that I circle, you can have four substituent. Okay, you need to circle the one. You need to choose the one with more number of substituent. Okay. So and then you need to start number from A or B. So if start number from A, then the first substituent will be a carbon number three. Kalau you start number from the B, your first substituent will be a carbon number two. 
So means that you need to start number from B. So but you want lowest possible number for the first substituent. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this parent is called so in six. So hexane. Then substituent. So what substituent do you have? So okay, let me change to another color. So substituent we have. Okay, so this is methyl. So we get two two dimethyl. And then we get ethyl at carbon number four. So I should write four ethyl. Okay, and then at carbon number three, we have uh, this is total three carbon, tapi sama kaki. So this is called isopropyl. Isopropyl at carbon number three, three isopropyl. And then, so we have, uh, these are our substituent. Then for the nanny, we need to arrange them in the alphabetical order. We need to arrange them in the alphabetical order. So this is E, this is I, and this is M. Okay, so which one come first? So E come first. So therefore it is four ethyl. So, and then uh, followed by I, three isopropyl, two, two dimethyl, hexate. Okay. So, and then now we move on to look at how to draw the structure for hydrocarbon. So if you have been given hydrocarbon, how do you uh, uh, draw them? How do you draw them? So you need to start with parent. You need to start draw the parent, okay? So like uh, three methyl pentane. So parent is pentane. So pentane, five carbon. And then only you draw the substituent. So substituent three means that the methyl is at the third carbon. So at the third carbon, you have methyl. Then only you draw the hydrogen. So the first carbon, uh, the first carbon here, so one covalent bond. So means that three left for hydrogen. So the second carbon here, two covalent bond. So means that two left for uh, hydrogen. So the third carbon here, three covalent bond, means that one left for hydrogen. So, and the, and the uh, fourth carbon here, okay, can you see that two covalent bond, dua lagi untuk hydrogen. And then the last carbon here, one covalent bond, tiga lagi for hydrogen. So this is how we draw the hydrocarbon okay. We draw the parents first. Then now we move on to look at B. So B, 1, 2, dichloro, 3, methyl, butane. So the parent, butane. So we draw butane first. And then at the, and then only we draw the substituent. At the first two carbon, so we have one chloro. And at the second carbon, also have another chlorine. And then at the third carbon, we have methyl. We have methyl. Then only we put in the hydrogen. So the fourth carbon here, one covalent bond. So bermasuk tiga lagi tinggal for hydrogen. And then at the third carbon, three covalent bond, satu lagi for hydrogen. And then on the second carbon, under satu dua, satu dua tiga covalent bond. So means that one left for hydrogen. So, and then, uh, so for the first carbon, two covalent bond, 
So two less, a uh, left for hydrogen. So this is how we draw the uh, structural formula for hydrocarbon. We start with parent, then only draw the substituent. Okay, so uh, maybe C, you do it as homework. So C, you do it as homework. So I will do D with you. So how to do D? Again, draw the parent first. Hexane, so six carbon. And then four ethyl, four ethyl. So on the fourth carbon, ethyl, ethyl permasu are the dual carbon. Okay, so you can draw CH2, CH3. So ethyl. And then at carbon number two, you have a uh, two methyl. So CH3, CH3. Okay, so the six carbon has one covalent bond, so means that three left for hydrogen. On the fifth carbon, two covalent bond, so means that two left for hydrogen. On the on the uh, fourth carbon, on the fourth carbon, you have one, two, three covalent bond, means that satu lagi for hydrogen. Okay, and then on the third carbon. Can you see that two covalent bond, two, two more left for hydrogen? Okay, and then on the second carbon, one, two, three, four, four covalent bond, so nothing left for hydrogen. So, and the first carbon here, one covalent bond, so three left for hydrogen. Okay, so that is the drawing. Then now we move on to look at how to name cycloalkane how to name cycloalkane remember cycloalkane basically is cyclic alkane it's a ring all the carbon so all the carbon atoms they are arranged in a ring so the general formula for cycloalkane is cnh2n same with alkene okay with n must be three four five okay so now uh, how to name cycloalkane? We need to start by naming the parent of the cycloalkane. So how do we name the parent of the cycloalkane? So basically to name the parent of the cycloalkane, we need to prefix the alkane with the word cyclo. Cyclo means that in the ring, in the ring. Okay, so like for example, if we have three member ring like this, so remember, three is a uh, prop, prop. So this is alkane, cycloalkane. So we need to prefix with cyclo. So therefore is cyclo, prop, and this is alkane. So need to end with A and E. So therefore it's called cyclopropate. And then if four member ring like this, so it's a ring need to prefix start with cyclo cyclo four member ring four member uh, four carbon in the ring so four carbon boot and then this is okay so you add a and e so boot a and e so therefore it's called cyclobutate and then five member ring so it's a ring five uh we need to name uh, start with cyclo so five carbon in the ring. So five carbon pent, pent. Okay, so pent. And with A and E because okay. Okay, and then six member ring. So start the ring. So start the cyclo. So enam carbon in the ring. So hex. Has a gone hex. And then this is okay. So need to end with A and E. So cyclohexane. So seven member ring. So ring need to start with cyclo. Seven member. So seven is hept. Hept. This is okay. So end with A and E. 
So it is therefore cyclopectin. So then step number two, okay, we need to number the cyclic compound. We need to number the cyclic compound. So to number, rule number one, if only one substituent. So if only one substituent, no need to number, no need to number. One substituent, no need to number for cycloalkane. One substituent, no need to number. Therefore, for this compound, for this compound, okay, so the parent in it, so this is the parent. So the parent is four membrane called cyclobutane. So this is the substituent. So the substituent called methyl. Therefore, the name, so substituent is methyl. Therefore, the name for this compound is methyl cyclobutane. Do we need to put the one? No, 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 because Step number two, rule number one, kalau satu substituent, tidak perlu nombor, tidak perlu nombor de kedudukan. Okay, you don't need to uh, design the, uh, design it the position if only one substituent. Okay, so rule number two, when we want to number the cyclic compound is when two substituents are present, at the dual substituent, then we need to begin with the substituent according to alphabetical order. We cannot number mengikut alphabetical order of the substituent. So what does this mean? So shall we look at this compound? So the parent, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the parent, six member ring. So parent ini panggil cyclohexate. And the substituent, so this is methyl. And this is ethyl. And rule number two, kata apa? Kalau two substituent, we need to begin mengikut alphabetical order. Mengikut alphabetical order. Kita kena nombor the carbon in the ring mengikut alphabetical order for the substituent. So E come first, E come first. So means that this is carbon number one. And then baru M kemudian, so number two. Okay, so means that our substituent will be one ethyl and two methyl. And therefore, the name for this compound is 1-ethyl, 2-methyl, cyclohexate. Okay? So, that is the rule in numbering the carbon in the ring. Kalau satu substituent, no need to number. Dual substituent, you cannot number mengikut alphabetical order. So then we move on to look at rule number three. Rule number three. So we have three or more substituent. The carbon is numbered with the substituent that leads to the lower set of locants. So what does this mean? Okay, so it means that Okay, so how should we number this? So we need to number it in the way that it need to give us the lowest set of location. Location, okay? The lowest set number of uh, locations of the substituent in the ring. Okay, so how should we number this? So if we start with this, uh, this substituent, one, two, three, four, five, six, then the substituent will be at one, two, four. Okay, 
So if we start number, okay, let me change to another color. So if we start number from this, one, two, three, four, five, six, then we get one, two, five. So if we start to number from the chlorine, the carbon chlorine is attached to, so one, two, three, four, five, six, we get one, three, four. So which one is the lower set of locket? So can you see that is the dark blue one? So the dark blue one is the lowest kedudukan for the dark blue adalah paling rendah, paling rendah. Okay, so according to rule number three, we want the substituent, okay, to be lowest set of locket. Kedudukan mereka kena paling kecil. So therefore, it need to be the dark blue one. It need to be the dark blue one sebab lebih kecil, paling kecil. Okay. So since we already know it's the dark blue one, so how do we name this compound? So first parent, the six member ring, so we call this as cyclohexate. And the substituent, so what substituent do we have? Okay, so for this one, one carbon, we call it as methyl. And this is dual carbon, so we call it as ethyl. Okay, and this methyl is at the second, so sekarang kita pilih the dark blue one because lower set of number. So the dark blue one, so uh, the methyl is at the second carbon, the ethyl is at the first carbon, and the chlorine is at the fourth carbon, so four chloro. Okay, so the substituent, we have 4 chloro, 1 ethyl, and 2 uh, methyl. So how do we name this compound? Again, alphabetical order, alphabetical order. So C dulu, baru E, then only M. So because of that, this compound is called 4 chloro, 1 ethyl, 2 methyl cyclohexate. Okay? So, class, are you all clear so far? So, if clear, okay, we move on to look at uh, step number three. So, step number three, when a ring uh, when a single ring system is attached, so we have a ring attached to a chain. We have a ring attached attached to a chain, long chain, okay? So the one with greater, uh, so the chain has a greater number of carbon. So if the chain, long chain, has greater number of carbon, then means that the ring will become the substituent. The ring will become the substituent if the chain has more carbon atom. So for example, so can you see that in the chain, we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbon. We have six carbon. But in the ring, we only have five carbon. We only have five carbon. So if only have five carbon in the in the ring, so means that the ring will become the substituent. So but bilangan carbon kurang. So it will become the substituent. So the chain will become the parent. So this will be the parent. So this will be the parent. So how should we number the parent chain again? We want lowest possible number for first substituent. Therefore, this must be number one, number two, three, 
four, five, six. Okay, so therefore this parent is called hexate. And then the substituent five member ring. So the ring becomes substituent. We just uh, the name just become our cube, our cube. So this is ring. So we call it as cyclo and five member ring. So cyclopentyl, cyclopentyl. And it is at carbon number one. It is at carbon number one. So therefore it's one cyclopentyl. So the name of this compound, therefore, is 1-cyclopentyl hexate. So now we move on to look at rule number two, when more than one ring system is attached to a single chain. So when more than one ring system is attached to a single chain, then it is appropriate to name the compound as cycloalkyl alkane. So more than more than one ring system. So we have two ring system att attached to the chain. Attached to the chain. So the ring will become the substituent. So this is the parent. Okay, so but sekarang kita have more than one ring system. So become attached to the single chain, then the, the ring will become the substituent. So this parent has one, two, three carbon. So therefore, this parent is propane. And then, can you see that this ring is a cyclohexyl? And it is attached to carbon number one and number three. So therefore it's one three dicyclohexyl. And this compound is therefore being called as one three dicyclohexyl propane. Okay. So now we move on to look at, uh, okay, so how to name this uh, cycloalkane. So how to name this cycloalkane. So shall we look at A first? So shall we look at A first? So A, which one should be the parent? The straight chain or the ring? Which one should be the parent? Okay, so need to see how many carbon, need to see how many carbon in total. So can you see that the chain, the chain consists of one, two, three, four, five. So consists of five carbon. One, two, three, four, five. So if consists of five, that means that while the ring only consists of three, only consists of three carbon. So this is five carbon, this is three carbon. Therefore, the chain should be the parent. So, and this parent is called uh, pentate, is called pentate. And the, and the, uh, and the cycloalkane, so become the substituent. And it is attached to carbon number two, carbon number two. So therefore, it is two cyclopropyl. So the name of this compound, therefore, is two cyclopropyl pentate. Okay, good. So now we move on to look at B. So the ring or the chain, which one should be the parent? Which one should be the parent? So the chain consists of three carbon. The ring consists of five carbon. So which one has more carbon? So the ring, so the ring should be the parent. So this parent is the ring. So therefore it's been called as five member ring. 
so cyclopentic cyclopentic and this substituent can you see that only one substituent only one substituent in the ring in the cycloalkane so you don't need to number the substituent no need to number two substituent in cycloalkane no need to number no need to number so and then this one total three carbon so and can you see that this is iso this is iso therefore it's called isopropyl isopropyl so the name for this compound therefore is isopropyl cyclopentic okay good so now we move on to uh look at okay d so c you do it as homework so shall we look at d so d can you see that the parent is the ring so this is the parent so the parent is the ring and this parent uh, is called cyclo so six member ring so cyclohexate and it has it has a uh, four substituent so remember four substituent three or more uh, three or more substituent we need to measure we get the lowest uh, set of lockets for all the substituent so which one should be number one so can you see that here you have two substituent attached to this carbon so we should put it as number one so means that you will get two one 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 okay you will get one one so so number one then number two number three four five six this should give you lowest set of lockets so your substituent you have uh one etl and eh, sorry uh yeah one etl uh one one etl and you also have one methyl and then you have so this carbon number two total three carbon in the in the number that samagaki samagaki so that is two uh two isopropyl and also we have five chloro again we need to arrange them in alphabetical order so c first okay and then e and then i and then m therefore the name of this compound is five chloro uh, sorry one ethyl two isopropyl one methyl uh sorry i not enough space so one methyl cyclohexate okay so that is the name for this compound a bit long okay so i finished the nomenclature for uh straight chain okay for branch alkane and also cycloalkane. So now I want to move on to look at the physical properties of alkane. So for physical properties of alkane and cycloalkane, we are going to look at mainly on the boiling point and also the solubility of alkane and cycloalkane in water and organic uh, solvent. Okay, so we shall look at the boiling point first. So before that, just need to uh, take note that for alkane, so the unbranched alkane means that straight chain alkane. So at room condition, if consists of one carbon until four carbon, means that methane until butane. Methane until butane, it will be in the gaseous state in the room condition. And from pentane up to 17 carbon, it will be liquid phase. 18 carbon onwards, it will be solid state. And then for the alkane, their boiling point, boiling point of alkane depends on the 
strain of the intermolecular forces. So generally, our K is non-polar molecule. Why is it non-polar molecule? It is because our K is hydrocarbon. Inside our K only have carbon and hydrogen. So carbon and hydrogen, almost similar electronegativity. When they have almost similar electronegativity, so the carbon hydro carbon hydrogen bond, therefore, is almost a non-polar bond. So because of that, your alkane is a non-polar molecule and the intermolecular forces between alkane molecule will just be the van der Waal forces. So what are the factors affecting the boiling point of alkane? So the first factor is molecular weight or we call, sometimes we call it a smaller mass. So as the alkane become bigger, like for example from butane, pentane until hexane, it becomes bigger, bigger. So when the molar mass increases or molecular weight increases, means that the size of the alkane become bigger. When the size become bigger, so size become bigger, means that surface area in contact between the alkane molecule become larger. When the surface area in contact between the alkane molecule become larger, the van der Waal forces between them will become stronger. So means that, like for example, so this is a butane and butane molecule. So butane and butane molecule and compare it with pentane and pentane molecule. So pentane, larger molecular size. So can you see that larger molecular size? The surface area in contact between the molecule larger compared to in butane. So when the surface area in contact larger, that means that when the wall forces will become stronger, will become stronger and more heat is required to overcome the van der Waal forces. That's why butane, pentane to hexane, you can see the boiling point increases because molar mass increase, molecular size bigger, larger surface area in contact between molecule, stronger van der Waal forces between molecule. So that is the first factor, molecular weight. The second factor is branching, means that the side chain. So for branching, only compare between isomer with same molecular weight. So means that same molar mass, same molar mass. Okay, so basically between the isomer which have same molar mass, the molecules with more branches, more branching is more compact. Like for example, pentane, 2 methyl butane, and 2 2 dimethyl propane. They all sama molecular weight because they all are C5 H12. They all are C5 H12. Three of them, they are all C5 H12. But then, 2,2 methyl propane, number that the boiling point is the lowest. Kenapa? Because it has two branch. Okay, so when more branches, more compact, more compact, size dear little bit compact, size dear little bit compact. Okay, so more branch become more compact, so surface area in contact between molecule. So surface area between molecule menjadi kurang, okay, due to the branching, surface area between uh, molecule makin kecil compared to pentane, straight chain like this. So can you see that the surface area in contact sangat banyak. Therefore, in pentane, the van der Waal forces a bit kuat compared to in 2,2 dimethyl propane. Okay, so you just need to remember more branches, more compact, smaller surface area in contact, weaker van der Waal forces, so lower boiling point. 
Okay, so more branches, more compact, smaller surface area in contact, weaker van der Waals forces, lower boiling point. So, and then how about cycloalkane? So in general, cycloalkane boiling point is about 10 to 15 higher than the straight chain alkane. So why? Because cycloalkane, so cycloalkane uh, is ring. So when ring, so for example, three member ring, so ring and ring, they are more compact because a ring is flatter. The shape is flatter, so more compact. Okay, the shape is more compact, flatter. So the inter the, the surface area in contact between the molecule is actually larger. Larger surface area in contact between because the shape flatter. The shape flatter, so the surface area in contact between the molecule larger. So the van der Waal forces stronger. That's why the cycloalkane higher boiling point than the straight chain alkane. Okay, so basically, uh, uh, so like for example, if we compare uh, cyclobutane and butane, can you see cyclobutane, higher boiling point? And upper cyclobutane, the shape flatter. So the flatter, larger surface area in contact between molecules, so stronger when they were forces, higher boiling point. So as a uh, pentane and a uh, cyclopentane and pentane. So what conclusions can we make about the boiling point? Cyclic compound, cycloalkane, boiling point higher. Then followed by straight chain alkane. The branching alkane, the, the, uh, the boiling point lower. Okay, so what branch? Menyebarkan the surface area in contact, berkuran. So, uh, uh, when the wall force is weaker, so lower the boiling point. So now, shall we look at uh, this alkane? So for this alkane, so always ask yourself, which factor? Molar mass or branching? Molar mass or branching? So for this one, how to know? So first, we, 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 we count the total number of carbon. Like for example, this one five carbon, this one four carbon, this one three carbon. So if carbon, number of carbon will tell us the molar mass. Okay, so less, uh, more carbon, so larger, largest molar mass. So this one is the one with smaller, smaller mass. So, kalau smaller, smaller mass, remember, surface area in contact will be the smallest. When the walls weakest, then lowest boiling point. So, let me write this A, B, C. So, C will be the lowest, followed by B, followed by A. So, which factor? Molecular weight or molar mass factor? Okay, so uh, I I go through how to how to deduce first, and then later on uh, we are going to look at the explanations. Okay, now how about this question? So for this question, so can you see that? So how many carbon? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So six carbon, and for this one also six carbon. So for this one, two, so also six carbon. Okay, so six carbon, six carbon. So bermaksud here, not the molar mass factor. Sebab bilangan carbon sama, molar mass adalah sama. So it means that it's not the molar mass factor. Then, which factor? So shall we, shall we draw out the, the molecule? then it will be clearer. So this one in the bracket, so means that it's a branching. So CH3, so two, so two CH3. Okay, 
So, and then this is in the bracket four times means that repeat four times. So this will give you CH3. So CH2 four times, repeat. Okay, and the last compound here, so bracket like this. So means that at this carbon, attached to two CH3 group. Okay, and then CH, so CH3, so CH3 group. Okay, so let me call this X, Y, Z. Okay, so can you see that here is the branching factor? Is the branching factor? So is the branching factor that affect the boiling point? Remember, more branching, more branches. Okay, more branches. So more branches so smaller surface area in contact then weaker van de Waal forces lower boiling point so which one more branches so the most is z two branches so means that z lowers boiling point the equity dengan x satu branch and then followed by y no branch okay so uh exam you can also write it in this form but if you write it in this form you need to write uh draw the arrow and write increasing boiling point Okay, so for this question, you can do as exercise. Then now we move on to look at uh, how to explain uh, this type of question. So exam, sometimes they ask us to explain. So how to explain? So how to explain? So uh, the first one is 2,2-dimethyl heptate. So you need to draw out the, the structure first, then easier for you to see. So still remember how to draw out the structure. So heptane, seven carbon. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then two, two dimethyl heptane. Okay, and then uh, heptane, so four ethyl heptane. So still... Heptane, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, and then at carbon number four, we have ethyl. And then two, two, four, four tetramethyl pentane. So, this is pentane. And then two, two tetramethyl. So, at carbon number two, you have methyl and also at carbon number four you have two methyl okay and then none none nine one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so now we can count uh we can count how many total carbon do they have so seven plus two so this one nine carbon total so seven plus two, so nine carbon total. And this one, five plus four, so nine carbon total. No name, also nine carbon total. So if nine carbon total for all of them, means that they will have same molar mass. So means that not molar mass factor or molecular weight factor. So but sama number of carbon bermasuk, Dia punya mo uh, molar mass adalah sama, molecular weight adalah sama. So, then, uh, which factor? It must be the branching factor. It must be the branching factor. Remember, only two factors affecting the boiling point of chain alkane. 
Okay, so chain alkane, two factor je, molar mass and also branching. So if not molar mass, then must be the branching factor. So now we look at the explanation. So as then, how do we explain this? So all the compounds have same molar mass. Nine carbon. So same molar mass, or we can also write same molecular weight. So when the number of branches increases, so still remember, as the number of branches increases, the surface area of surface area in contact between molecule decreases, or you can write uh, reduces. Okay, decreases. Okay, so the strength of the Van der Waal forces. So the surface area in contact with right? So the strength of Van der Waal forces also decreases means that the van der waal forces become weaker become weaker okay so this is the general statement that we need to write untuk beritahu orang mana satu faktor so here we already tell people buka molar mass like say molar mass buka molar mass so it's the branching, it's the branching factor. And then when the branching pertama, surface area between molecule reduces. So the strength of many wall forces occurred. So which one has the highest boiling point? Must be the one yang tak ada branch. So that will be the no name. No branching. So no name is the one with the highest boiling point because it is straight chain it is a straight chain alkane okay and has so straight chain alkane largest surface area in contact between molecule okay so and then followed by so which one has one uh, branch so one branch is for ethyl so this one is one branching so one branch okay so for ethyl heptate okay has higher boiling point than so uh this one two branches so two branches so it will be higher boiling point than two two dimethyl heptate so because so for ethyl heptate only have one branch and smaller surface eh, sorry uh so if one branch so one branch so larger surface larger surface area between molecule compared to two two dimethyl heptate so two two dimethyl heptate more branches so, kalau more branches, smaller surface area in contact. Kalau four ethyl heptane are the satu branch sahaja, so the surface area in contact between molecule is larger. So, and then who has the lowest boiling point? So, must be the 2, 2, 4, 4. So, 2, 2, 4, 4. Tetra methyl. Pentate has the lowest boiling point. Why? Because he ha uh, it has four branches. Okay, so or you can say the most branches. Okay, so therefore the so most branches, so smallest surface area in contact between molecule. That's why lowest boiling point. So how should we explain this type of question? So we need to have a general statement. Memberi tahu orang mana satu faktor. Lepas itu, usually we will we will look at the uh, order. So uh, like for this question, they ask you to uh, arrange in decreasing order. In decreasing order. So in decreasing order, it will be the name first. Then followed by 
four ethyl heptane followed by two two dimethyl heptane and then barula two two four four tetra methyl pentate okay so this is the arrangement this is the order and then when we want to explain so but no name dulu then we need to explain why no name the highest and then followed by comparison and then the lowest one the lowest one this is usually how we explain the boiling point of alkane so now shall we move on to the next one so ascending order of the boiling points okay so remember before we explain kita kena cari dulu what factor molar mass or branching molar mass or branching so for that we need to know whether uh, the molar mass the molar mass okay so how to know the molar mass we need to know the total number of carbon so to know the total number of carbon we need to roughly draw out the ranka carbon okay so like for this one two methyl butane so this is two methyl butane so total five carbon and then heptane so seven carbon okay so and then three methyl hexane So this is three methyl hexane, also seven carbon, and then pentane, and then three three dimethyl pentane. So three three dimethyl pentane. So this one also seven carbon. This one five carbon. Can you see that these two five carbon? Five carbon, bermasuk molar mass dia mesti dua ni five carbon molar mass dia or molecular weight dia mesti lebih kurang daripada the seven carbon. So when the molecular weight or molar mass lower, then definitely the boiling point will be lower compared to the seven carbon. Molar mass factor will be dominating. Molar mass factor will be dominating. So five carbon lower molar mass definitely lower boiling point than the seven carbon okay so definitely lower than the seven carbon so means that here in this question will be two factor in order for you to arrange the order of boiling point will be the molar mass factor and also the branching factor okay molar mass factor and the branching factor so for molecules with same molecular weight so branching okay so so okay so branching increase okay so branching affects okay uh, actually something is missing here so branching uh increase reduce the surface area in contact between molecule and van der Waals forces therefore molecules with more branches okay or smaller surface area have lower boiling point okay so for the molecule with same molecular weight means that same number of carbon so same number of carbon what factor affecting the boiling point will be the branching but if the number of carbon or molar mass different that will be the molar mass factor okay so now so who has higher molecular mass so who has higher molar mass so heptane 
primitive hexane. And also three three dimethyl pentane have same and higher molar mass, but so which one is the straight chain? So among these three, heptane is the straight chain. So it has the highest boiling point. So we know heptane highest boiling point because larger molecular weight and also it is a straight chain and then so therefore the van de Waal forces is stronger or greater compared to 3 methyl hexane and 3 3 dimethyl pentane okay so for three methyl hexane and also three three dimethyl pentane, so they are branch out K. So can you see that three methyl hexane one branching, three three dimethyl pentane two branching, two branching. Okay, so when they have branch, so lower van de Waal forces than heptate okay so which one has more branch so three three dimethyl pentane two branches so therefore three three dimethyl pentane so more branch so lower boiling point compared to three methyl hexane so just now we know that heptane highest boiling point because molar mass largest and also the uh, it is a straight chain. So largest uh, surface area in contact, greatest van de Waal forces. And then uh, 3 methyl hexane, so only one branch. So therefore the boiling point is higher than 3, 3 dimethyl pentane okay so and then another two so two methyl butane and also pentane so both of them same molecular mass five carbon okay but then pentane is the straight chain so pentane is the straight chain so we'll have the higher boiling point compared to 2 methyl butane which has branch so lowest 2 methyl butane followed by pentane okay so again so we need to start with general statement so molar mass and also the branching affecting the uh, affecting the uh, the boiling point for this question okay and then so for seven carbon so higher molar mass higher molar mass so therefore they are they are boiling point definitely higher than the five carbon and between the between the alkane okay with the same number of carbon branching will be the factor affecting the boiling point okay so with that okay so the last question so how do we arrange this okay so just to summarize what uh, i have uh, taught you tonight so remember cycloalkate a will have the highest boiling point higher boiling point so why cycloalkane flatter so flatter Larger surface area in contact between the molecule, higher boiling point. So followed by straight chain. Okay, so straight chain also have larger surface area in contact. And then branch RK will have lower boiling point because branching reduce the surface area in contact. 
weaken the van de Waal forces, so lower boiling point. So, oh, two, uh, okay, let me quickly finish the physical properties, so two more slides. So, uh, so we already covered the boiling point, so I'll move on to look at the solubility of alkane and cycloalkane. So um, basically, solubility of alkane and cycloalkane is affected by the ability of the alkane and cycloalkane to form, to form uh, uh, intermolecular forces with solvent. Okay, remember, alkane and cycloalkane, they are nonpolar. So they are nonpolar molecule, so means that between them only have weak van de Waal forces. Weak van de Waal forces. However, in order to dissolve or be soluble in water, so water is a polar solvent. So for a compound or substance to be able to be soluble in water, it must be able to form hydrogen bond with water molecule. Okay, so must be able to form hydrogen bond with molecule in order to be soluble in water. However, alkane and cycloalkane, they are insoluble in water. Why they are insoluble in water? Remember, I told you, alkane and cycloalkane, they are nonpolar molecule, only have weak van de Waal forces between them. Since they only have weak van de Waal forces between them, means that they are not able to form hydrogen bond with water molecule. Since they are not able to form hydrogen bond with water molecule, they are therefore insoluble in water. Okay, so non-polar molecule only have weak van de Waal forces between the molecule. Cannot form hydrogen bond with water, therefore not soluble in water. How about the organic solvent? So in order to be soluble in organic solvent, means that alkane and cycloalkane must be able to form uh, to form van de Waal forces with the uh, nonpolar solvent, with the organic solvent. Okay, so basically alkane is soluble in nonpolar solvent, soluble in nonpolar organic solvent. So such as benzene chloroform. So uh, alkane are soluble in them. Why? It is because, again, alkane, nonpolar molecule. So nonpolar molecule can form weak van de Waal forces between the molecule, and therefore they can form weak van de Waal forces with the nonpolar solvent. Since they form non uh, 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 weak van de Waal forces with nonpolar solvent, therefore it can be soluble in nonpolar solvent. Okay, you just need to remember, kalau mau soluble in water, kena boleh membentuk hydrogen bond. Okay, tak boleh membentuk hydrogen bond with water, so not soluble in water. Tapi soluble in organic, uh, uh, organic solvent, nonpolar organic solvent, sebab okay, nonpolar molecule boleh membentuk van de Waal forces. Dan dia juga boleh membentuk van de Waal forces dengan nonpolar solvent, nonpolar organic solvent. Therefore, dia larut dalam nonpolar organic solvent. Okay, so I will stop here, and then now you can scan uh, your attendance. So scan this. I give you uh, thirty second. Scan this, and then uh, uh, fill in your details uh, as the attendance for tonight's class. Okay, so 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so, uh, okay, so that's it for tonight class. Okay, so good night everyone. So I will see you tomorrow for some of you.
Okay. So, bye-bye. Good night to all my students. So, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.